Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another review of the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. I am the Winter Caden. I'm also joined by the Mark and Agent Jack DeChamp. We got a lot to cover in this really, this is the longest episode so far. Let's get right into it, guys. So the story in this episode brought us to Madripoor as Falcon, Winter Soldier, and Zemo, as they break Zemo out of prison, and they take him to Madripoor, a city in Singapore where a lot of uh, criminals will hide, and they're trying to find a lead on the super soldier serum. So, Agent Jack, how do you feel about the story as a whole, kind of going to Madripoor, which, I mean, in the comics is a fairly well-known place, and, I mean, how do you feel about the episode and the story overall told here? It was pretty cool. I thought this open, uh, just to talk about the opening real quick, I just thought that was pretty badass um you have these <laughs> you have them go and you know sam have, he has no idea about what's going on you know uh bucky's telling him everything step by step and it's almost like rhetorical like what if we did this and i thought it was cool just to sum it all up it was i thought it was really really cool and then you see zemo who we haven't seen since what civil war so mm -hmm. that was cool it was a cool callback too yeah, I mean, I love when when Bucky's when they're breaking Zemo out. Bucky says theoretically or hypothetically, "What if we did this?" And Sam immediately knows. He goes, "What did you do?" And then we see him breaking him out. I found that to be really funny. Uh, Mark, how do you feel here about this episode? I thought it was genius. Um, I was like, "Wait a minute, why are they breaking this guy out? Why are they doing this? What's going on here?" Um, but I just thought I thought it was great. I really, I right away, I just connected everything to Civil War and Captain America, even WandaVision. Um, because I, I think that every single episode that keeps happening, you just get more and more clues and, and you get more and more callbacks to other things. Mm -hmm. um, so the beginning of this episode was just incredible because I, I'm getting hooked, man. I'm getting hooked. Like th I, this is the whole story. And you know what the funny thing is, is that you know, one of our other colleagues was like, but wait a minute, why does this and this and this and this and this, and this happen? And then all of a sudden we were just like, keep watching. So, yeah. mm -hmm. yes. Right. Well, right. I mean, talk. I mean, we already talked about Zemo a little bit. Let's get right mm -hmm. into how we felt about Zemo's character. So Zemo in this episode, we kind of see he gets that iconic comic book purple mask. And he is purely a badass. He showed mm -hmm. badassery everywhere. This was the mm -hmm. character development that his character needed for Civil War, which was yeah. his character in Civil War sucked. So this was it's the true. next level. And I loved him. So I'm going to go first to the mark here. How do you feel about Baron Zemo here? Well, no, see, because the thing is, in Civil War, there was so much stuff going on. Mm -hmm. And also, they were, trying to, they were trying to set up a story for the future. So now, I, what I like about it is that they're kind of more diving into it. and bring, they, It's like they're bringing us into the past, but then diving into the future. Now, the only thing that I don't like is that you really have had to have seen these movies in order to understand what's going on. Yeah. That's that's the reality of the situation. Like you really have to be a part of the MCU. Like this is uh, made for the fans, um, which is awesome. You know what I mean from a mm -hmm. fan perspective. But like if you just if you're just coming out of nowhere, be like, oh hey, watch this show. Nah, that's nah, not gonna work. Agent yeah. Jack, I know. Yeah. Uh, I know. Yesterday, you mentioned to me Zemo that you like Zemo's dancing. Why don't you talk about that for a second? Oh man, so Zemo, there was the, his character was kind of flushed a lot. But before I get to the dancing, because his dance moves remind me of mine back in my prom day when I had you know um, very loose knees and could do what I can do. But um, they really flushed those characters because I I agree with Civil War Civil War buff on how like and Civil War. You didn't really get to see a lot of Zemo. You know, he wanted to get revenge on his family, but there wasn't a whole lot we knew about him. But in mm -hmm. this episode, where you see him when he, when he dons the mask, which is pretty cool, um, and then he's he's killing people. Even if there was a small part where I said, "Oh my God, he's already turning on everybody," but he's blowing everyone to smithereens. He's and and also too because his character, like I feel like you have to see the movie, but you also, if you're a comic book fan, you will know things. Like he mentioned something over the lines of like he's rich. He, because Falcon and um, Bucky, they were like, wait, you 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 have a plane? He said, I forgot what he said, but he, he mentioned how he, he comes from like a long line of royalty. So I thought yeah. that was really cool. To, I they, mean, like, he had a plane. He had an Alfred. He was he had an Alfred. Like, he was he like was Bruce, Bruce Wayne. Wayne. Yeah. He, he had all that. And, and, I, and I thought that was really cool because they showed a lot more to him, showing like he liked to find things in life and everything. And even there's a spot of um, he mentions to them like, oh, yeah, do you remember when uh, you destroyed my, my home? So, you know, he made it clear, like, it w when he mentions to Bucky, like, oh, everything I did, it wasn't personal. It's just I had a reason. He was mm -hmm. one of those villains who, like, when people talk about, I don't want to go off too far, but when we talk about, um, 
Oh, God. Killmonger. He had a reason. He was just saying I had a reason for what I did. I'm not saying it's right, yeah. but I did what I did. But uh, also to talk about the dance. And when he bust out the dance moves, I got excited. He had, I think he had a cup. He did a little shimmy. He did something. I said, that's the Zemo I want to party with. I want to hang out with that Zemo. I want to take an Uber with this guy. I don't know where we're going, but we're doing this. And we're doing this. So Zemo was pretty cool in this episode. Badass and dance moves and all. Footloose yes, Zemo. Yeah, another character we got a lot of solid development from that was much needed was Emily Van Camp's Sharon Carter, mm -hmm. Agent 13. She was also in this episode, and I thought, I mean, talk about badassery continuing. Yep. She was fantastic. They really got – she got a lot of much-needed screen time. I'm, yep. It looks like this is all we're going to see of her in the show. I'm hoping we see more. So but let's go to I Ron. Think, I think they, yeah, I think they opened her up for more. Yeah, so on, I yeah. hope so. I, I really do. If the floor is mine, I, I do hope they yeah. do show more of her because, like, I feel like, and not to say there's not a lot of, and we're using this word a lot, badass. That's going to be the word of the night, folks, badass. But the, um, and there's a lot of badass women in the Marvel the MCU. But it was nice to see her because she's she's probably one of the few without real superpowers, right? So you see mm -hmm. her in that in that scene where she's in, um, they're in the, um the alley or whatever and you see her beating these guys i mean just taking all these guys out it was really cool to see her it's cool that they didn't forget about her and gave us a little background on why we haven't seen her for all these years because we haven't seen her for years what happened to her it, where did she go I, I thought she fell into a black void i didn't know what where she went so to see her here now it was really cool and um and and give us a little bit of a story so i do agree with um civil war buff cwb over there that they open the door more for her and they're probably going to have her uh I, I believe we're going to see more of her if it's not in this uh this series mm -hmm. i just think in mcu in general so no i i think she's going to play in a, a really important part in this series uh, yeah so if you, civil war buff if you had a, a quick guess about what other series you, or movie do you think she could be in which one would you bet on well definitely um endgame you know what i mean like as far as the the whole mcu or anything Anything that has to come with it in the future, or at least maybe maybe the Marvel, the definitely Spider Man, like the whole Marvel verse thing that's going to happen, the whole uh, multiverse thing. I think she could definitely be a part of that. I was asking if she was part of Agents of Shield because I was very very excited to see her. Now, a full disclosure, I kind of got like a Elliot Stabler SVU feel out of it because I literally just finished watching that and then saw Winter Soldier. So, um, you know, the fact that both of those characters had like like 10 years without being seen, so it kind of felt the same. So like, um, I would I really popped when I saw her because the thing about it is it's just that all you see on YouTube, because look, a lot of people are making money off of this, like just coming up with stuff. I saw all the YouTubes about Wolverine coming and about um, wow. even Cable coming into this show. And like, you know, if you look on YouTube and you look up anything with the MCU, yeah. Is a whole bunch of predictions. So the smart marks are all over the place. So the one thing that I loved about seeing her is that everybody was wrong. Everybody, nobody saw this coming. No, really, because she was in the trailer. Girl. <clears throat> no, well, she was. Yeah. Oh, I didn't even peep that. Look yeah, she was. Wow. Yeah, she was in that that alleyway know. scene. I mean, th like this picture right here is like shit up from the trailer. Oh, okay, okay. That's, that, well, that's because yeah. honestly, I just went and saw the show. Like, but the reality is just that. But at the end of the day, like, I don't think anybody even thought about her showing up in this show. Yeah, you know what I mean. And the fact that that happened is just calling back to Civil War. Like, I think all of this so far is just connects to Civil War. I think I, I think it's the that does that. I think it's um, tying in or a lot of loose ends, too, at the same time, because there's a lot of ends that we never got conclusions to. Like, we did not know what happened. To her. So for her to sit here and say, I had to go into hiding because of this and I can't do such and such. So it, it ties up loose ends. Yeah. So I'm going to I'm going to show quickly a address, lot of them, uh, some of the stuff with Madripoor. So they're trying to find that super soldier serum and they do actually find the doctor that did create it. And it was stolen by the Flag Smashers girl, Carly. The doctor was killed by Zemo. So now they basically have no lead on how to either crack the Super Soldier Serum, make more of it, where they're going to go from here. But they are going to follow the Flag Smashers through Europe. So that's where they're going to go now is Europe. So 
I mean, I don't know about you guys. I thought Madripoor was actually a pretty good setting for this episode. Mm-hmm. I thought it, it was really beautiful. cool to kind of see like what Bucky, I, I thought they toned down Bucky in the first two episodes a little too much. And I wanted to see the winter soldier again. And this was well, a very definitely... solid introduction of Bucky is still the winter soldier. He might not be mm-hmm. under the mind control, but he still has, I mean, it goes back to our word of the week of badass. Bucky was also badass in that bar scene. Right. Thanks. So, Mark, Mark, are you excited to see the Winter Soldier again? Oh, um, well, you see, no, what I like about this is that, is that Bucky knows how to implement the things that he learned as the Winter Soldier to help him now. Mm-hmm. The break, the break, the breakout, the whole bar situation, even when he was acting as the Winter Soldier, when, um, when the other guy, guy was going to go sell him. You know that that whole like he he pretty much knows how to use that narrative, um, and that's one thing that I really really like, and I'm really looking forward to seeing how he does a little bit of both, because like you know it, it clearly he's he's worried about Captain's opinion and he wants to be the good guy deep down in his heart, mm-hmm. but when he needs to be, <laughs> yeah, the bad yeah, guy so, comes out. Yeah, I got uh, some I mean, right here. Another great thing that we got in this episode was we didn't see a lot of U.S. agent, but we did see him kind of continuing this heel turn that he started at the end of the last episode. He Mm -hmm. goes to where we we saw the Flag Smashers in episode two. They were kind of hiding in this in in a building and they go to that building and he starts breaking all these laws saying that they're not going to find out if they don't say anything. I thought this was actually really good work with the character and I'm really excited to see where they're going to go. Agent Jack, how do you feel about this stuff with U.S. agent? It shows that uh, he's starting to crack a little bit. Like this is, he's take, it's, it's a lot of pressure on him. Um, it, 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 how do I feel about this? I mean, yeah, it, it, I mean, we all knew he was going to be like the villain. I, I didn't think he was going to be the main villain, but it's showing. Like for me, it just shows the the cracks on being um, Captain America and how it can change. I think yeah. um, I think last episode when they said, "Well, you guys underneath the government, we're free agents," so. I think that that broke him a little bit, and and yeah, now mm-hmm. he's trying to prove him wrong. And I feel like there's a way he's trying to prove everyone wrong, because even mm-hmm. his man's. And I think when you guys mentioned it, because uh, I kind of forgot this detail, but his man's Battle Scar Galactica <laughs> sat here and said, um, "Hey man, what are we doing? What are we doing here?" So mm-hmm. he's, it's showing it's showing cracks and it's showing cracks in the shield. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep, yep. I yep. agree. Well, I mean, I, we, we uh, yeah, go ahead and go. Uh, I feel this whole thing feels very Seth Rollins, very Monday Night Messiah. I was about to say that. I was you know what I mean? Oh, really? The whole thing feels Seth Rollins, Monday Night Messiah, and Black Murphy. Straight up. Yeah. Like, this is what, that's what this is. Like, it's hilarious. No, it's I'm Murphy. just waiting. I'm waiting for him to just, you know, beat up Black Murphy. and <laughs> It's Buddy Murphy. And, and, and start talking about the greater good. And all of this other crap. That's what I'm waiting on. I'm waiting for some for Captain America to hit somebody with the shield, and they hit him with a curb stop because this is yeah. mad Monday Night Messiah well, right now. Ladies and gentlemen, we ended this episode with, of course, another introduction of a character where yeah. we had in the back alleyway we find Ao, one of the members of the Wakandan Guard, and I'm going to quickly ask you guys this question. First, are you excited to see a Wakandan warrior? And do you think we will see the late, great Chadwick Boseman making an appearance in this show? Oh, that would be awesome. That I would be so it. cool. That I don't think, awesome. yeah, I don't think so. That would that would be awesome. Um, now, you know, full disclosure, the funny thing about this is that when our colleague Chrissy was watching this show Hi, Chrissy. the other day, after we watched this, it was it's so hilarious. She starts hitting us up. She's like, hey, guys, how come they don't have a show about Wakanda? You know, they should have a show about Wakanda. And then da 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 Wakanda, Wakanda, Wakanda. And we're just like, you know what? Keep watching. Yeah. And then and then at the end, she's like, oh. You know, because I'm just like, wait, look at Bucky's arm. Yeah. Look how Bucky's yeah. calling himself White Wolf. Look at the end of the show. And then all of a sudden, everybody's like, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I just that, find that hilarious. I, because I thought that was, a, yeah. I'm sorry. Finish. No, I'm no. Sorry. The reason why, and the reason why I say that is because I'm sure that there's a lot of people that felt the way that she felt, and like they were asking for that, and then the void was literally filled by the end of the episode. 
So yeah. I just found that whole situation just hilarious because I'm no, sure she's was, not the only one to, to, to do that. I thought I thought that was really cool, uh, and I'll just give my two cents in, maybe three. Um, I thought that um, I thought that was really cool when you see him walking and you see these beads. I think he picks up two, and then that's when you see. I'm sorry, how do you say her name? Because I want to butcher it. A, I think it's um, Ao. But when you Ao, Ao, you see her show up. I said, "Oh, that's so cool!" Like I, I like that connection because, like, these are shows, but I love that these shows show you that it's so connected mm-hmm. to them too. That's what I love about it. So I was, I was, I was a big fan of it. I can't wait to see what episode uh, four is about. Yeah. Um, Kane, you, you, you wanted to uh, went to Kane. You want to wrap it up? I mean, this is pretty yeah, much it. I'm I just want to end it off out. with. I just want to end it off with this because I see that uh, John Walker, the actual actor, gets a lot of hate. Dude, you got to realize he's just an actor playing the guy. Do not mm-hmm. send him death threats because that is just so corny and it's whack. But wait, so wait a minute. I heard that he said that he likes it. That, well, that maybe he, that, you do, that, that he's happy think- that he's happy that the character is being hated because that's the per- that's the point of it. Like he's, I think that he knows he's supposed to be playing the heel. And he knows that because the thing is, is that like if you're a heel and you all all of a sudden people like you, you're not doing your job. And he just even said himself him. that he likes it. Just just, just I mean, don't send him death threats. That's all. Yeah. Oh, he's getting that far. I didn't know that. I'm sorry. Okay, I didn't hear. <laughs> just, all please that. don't. Well. Uh, ladies, and, ladies and gentlemen, this has been episode three of the Falcon and Winter Soldier. I've been the Winter Caden. He's been Civil War buff. He's been Agent Jack the Champ. And we'll see you guys next week. Ah. Peace.